Hey everybody and welcome back to the Galloway Farm. In this video we're going to be taking you along week by week as we raise our meat chickens all the way up until the time of processing. And we have a really great opportunity to partner with our local cooperative extension. They're going to do a partnership video with us and help us uh, use the equipment, set it up for us and that kind of thing. If you haven't already checked out our video where we got our 60 meat birds, you'll want to go ahead and watch that video. I'll go ahead and link it up in the upper right hand corner of this video for you to view. And once you have watched that, you'll see that we not only have the jumbo Cornish crossbirds, but we also inadvertently got a single freedom ranger a red freedom ranger and so we're going to be comparing that growth to the growth of the jumbo cornish cross as we go along as well and before we jump into the video go ahead and make sure that you are subscribed so you never miss out on what's going on here at the farm so this is week number one but it's not really week number one and what i mean by that is anytime you're working on a project of this size that it's going to take a couple of months to record all the videos and edit it over time um, inevitably something's going to go wrong and for us that meant some of our video data footage uh, got corrupted and week one was one of those weeks we do have a small clip that i'll put at the end of this explanation but um, as far as the week number one update goes we received 58 at the end of week number one we still have 58 alive and uh, the only thing that i would uh, make comment on is that we did have to clean for pasty butt um, i think a couple of times and some of them were actually really bad to the point where we had to soak their little bums before we were able to uh, get the pasty butt off of there. So um, that was just something that we knew from having chickens beforehand, but we weren't anticipating having to do it with the meat chickens for whatever reason. And it was only about eight or 10 of them that it happened. So it wasn't a bunch of them and it wasn't a big chore, but it's just something that you guys need to be aware of uh, moving forward. So here is the clip from actually week number one. As far as their eating habits go, they're pretty much just eating two, let me see if I can get it. They're pretty much just eating two full one of these a day. And we're gonna to start tonight actually with the conclusion of week number one. We're gonna start taking their food away from them at night so that they're eating during the day and they're not eating at night. So back for week number two, these guys have grown tremendously. We have not lost any birds besides the two that came deceased. We have a 100% rate right now for our little babies. And as you see, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So as you can see, there's a couple of things that are different. We have changed out their feeding trough to now be a trough instead of just one of those little cheap plastic feeders. We are watering them uh, out of that gallon jug twice daily and they are growing like crazy. If we get a close-up on these birds, you'll see that they actually ha have some of their wing feathers. They're starting to fly around and flap around, getting up on things that they shouldn't get to, and so that means it's almost time to move them out on pasture, which is really exciting. That's why we wanted these birds in the first place. Also, you'll notice that trough, that comes out at night, so they don't have access to food all night long. We feed them once in the morning, and then once again when we get home, but we do run two feeders in the morning. So we run them two feeders, and then when we get home, we take away one feeder, refill one feeder, and put it in there. They're normally not as hungry that second go around. We haven't had to keep the heat lamp on them much because it has been so uh, hot here. So we're really looking forward to moving these guys out on pasture, and I uh, can't wait to show you that process in week number three. So we're back here, week number three update. The birds are ready to move out. So we're gonna bring you along for that part of the process today. As you can hear, they are loud, they are boisterous, they are playful, and they're ready to get out. We're moving them out mainly for two reasons. I guess technically three. Number one, it's time. It's time to move these guys out on pasture so they can get those fresh bugs and fresh grass. Reason number two, as you can see, still, they're starting to fly and they're starting to get up on the top of the lip and actually escaping into our shed, which is really not a good thing. And reason number three is because the temperatures have stabilized. We're supposed to get some clear skies. It's not supposed to rain as much. So we're gonna go ahead and get these guys out on pasture and bring you along.
So we're back, week number four update. The birds have been on pasture for an entire week in their chicken tractor. You will notice there's a couple of modifications that we made to include this cabana over the top. Because we didn't think ahead, and by we, I mean me, didn't really think ahead about how much rain we would be getting if we would get that much. With a flat roof and a tarp at that, there's really nowhere for that water to go, so it wasn't running off. So we set this cabana up, and that keeps the water off the chickens as well. We also added some step flashing to the inside. I'll get a close up of that and show you guys that, but essentially what we had was a digging problem. We had some type of critter that came in, dug under, uh, didn't get all the way in, but enough to get its arm in and got one of the chicken's uh, legs. So we came out one morning and there was a one-legged chicken. And when that happened, we gave it a couple of days to see if it was gonna be okay, see if it was gonna adjust. Unfortunately, it didn't, and we had to cull that one a little bit sooner. So we only have lost one chicken in this whole process, which is absolutely amazing, at least as far as I'm concerned. Since we have installed uh, the step flashing around the edges, um, we haven't really had any more issues with digging or tunneling or anything like that. The birds are super happy, super healthy. Like I said, when we move them, they just get so excited. You'll also notice over in the corner there, we have a new watering system. It's just a five gallon bucket with some holes in it that have the uh, drip cups on the side, not the ones with the little nipples in it, but just the ones that are gravity fed. We found that those work really well with this type of flock, with these type of birds. As you see here, we are up the hill from where we started moving the chickens. We started them off day number one on this patch and slowly started moving them down. You have to ignore that bald spot there. We did have a little bit of a dirt spot. We didn't keep them on that for, uh, but for a day. And then we kept moving them. But if you see the difference in these two grasses, you'll notice that the one on the left hand side where they haven't been yet along this strip is a lot more lush. It ha you can tell it hasn't been eaten through yet, but if you look at the one on the right hand side, it is so much more green and that is because of their manure mixing in with all of that rain that we've had recently and it is just doing our grass wonders. Hopefully this is going to be our garden spot for the future and so we're going to go ahead and take advantage of these animals and their waste and turn it into uh, goodness for our soil and hopefully for our vegetables to come. Good morning everybody, here we are in week five. As far as our update goes, nothing really uh, too crazy has happened with the birds at this point. We did have a tropical storm come through and the chicken tractor did fine, but you'll notice that the cabana is missing. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, as we were sitting in the back of my truck, it just went flying across the yard. And so we have a replacement cabana on the way. We did during that storm lose three chickens, however, uh, all the rest of them remain safe. As you can see, these little guys are just grubbing down on everything in sight. We're getting to the point where we're gonna to have to start moving them every single day, which is no big deal. But we do wanna make sure that their grass remains fresh, that they can get all the bugs and the critters. And I'm actually surprised at how many uh, little crickets and worms and beetles and stuff they end up finding throughout the day as we go along and as we move them and that kind of thing. And they just love to move. As soon as we start pulling, they all run to the front and they try to get that freshest and cleanest of the grasses. And it's just so nice to watch as the, uh, the animals that you're raising that you know you're gonna feed your family with are, are eating and, and getting their nutrients from the ground and from the grass. And it's just a, a really, really wonderful thing. So here we are, beautiful morning of week number six. And if we had to describe week number six in just a single word for our meat chickens, it would be growth. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Caitlin and I were kind of starting to worry about the size of our chickens. We, by week five, we felt like they should be fuller in their uh, feathers, that they should be a little bit bigger. And then week six happened and they are growing like crazy we cannot believe the growth has just taken place in a week and to think we have another week week and a half before processing uh, that is absolutely insane i cannot imagine what these guys are going to look like when it does come time for uh processing day even our little freedom ranger has started to grow substantially you can see her there 
next to a regular Cornish cross. Also, before I forget, you can see some minor modifications that we had to make and this was a result of the tropical storm. We had to put a new cabana on the top because our old cabana ended up over in the wood line and <laughs> uh, the tarp on the top got ripped up. It was just a really cheap uh, tarp that we bought so this time we got a little bit thicker of a tarp and got a spare uh, because you know the things you learn. And then this will be their last patch of grass so they'll go all the way up and then they'll come all the way back down and they'll be right in front of our shed when it comes time for processing day. Welcome to week number seven. Really, as far as week number seven is concerned, the only real uh, thing of note is that we have started moving them every single day instead of every two days. And the main reason for that is just because um, the grass was starting to look a little grimy after they got done. And so we decided it would probably be, uh, probably be best to go ahead and uh, up their intake of grass and insects and things like that. We did put some on the scales, which you'll see uh, here, and they didn't quite measure up to where we thought they needed to be, so we decided let's go ahead and in up their intake of grass and of crickets and all the other good bugs and stuff, and then if need be, we can up their food as well to get them ready for processing within the next couple of weeks. So that's week number seven. Welcome back to week number eight. This time the update is fairly short and sweet and to the point. Uh, basically what happened is that the chickens just weren't quite ready yet. Uh, we attribute a lot of that to the heat. Uh, it has been very, very hot here recently. It has also been rainy on and off too, uh, which has actually helped flush some of the bugs out which they like to eat. But just the heat has caused them to uh, burn more calories throughout the day and as a result not put on as much weight as we would like them to so we are not processing in week eight like we originally anticipated we're waiting another week we'll do another weigh-in and check and see if they're ready at that time and hopefully be ready to process by week number nine week number nine is here and we are ready for processing it is actually the day before time to process and i'll go ahead and show you a close-up of our chickens As of this morning, we have taken the chickens' food away from them. Since it is the day before processing, we want them to be rid of any waste that's in their body, hopefully. Uh, we want to make sure that they don't have anything in their crop when it comes time to process them so that we don't maybe by chance puncture that and get some waste into the finished product. We want to make it as clean and as smooth a process as possible. As you can see, they've grown up really nicely. Again, like I said in week number eight, the heat was just a little bit much. If we were going to do this again, we would probably start a little bit sooner in the year, maybe even uh, right after the winter months to really get a, a jump start on processing some of these birds. Boy, are they really excited for processing day. Also, before I forget, I wanted to give you an update on the Freedom Ranger versus the Jumbo Cornish Cross. We did receive one Freedom Ranger from Meyer Hatchery, and as you can see, it is substantially smaller than the rest. So we're going to go ahead and keep it for a few more weeks in our chicken hospital. Also want to give a quick shout out to Sean from our local cooperative extension that came and delivered us the plucker as well as the scalder. Uh, he came and dropped it off the house all free of charge. Huge shout out to Sean and our local cooperative extension to help us along this process. And if you want to see how to use this equipment, we'll be posting another video, a how to process chickens, where we will feature both the plucker as well as the scalder and the killing cones that are actually inside uh, the scalder. So we'll walk you through that whole process and hopefully you will come along for that journey as well. <laughs> 